who said that this is a that this is a good initiative wherein we also wish to participate and work for youth knowledge capacity building and betterment in times to come so with that kind of a response coming from our partners i think we made a good start now why it all began and what were the ethos and ideologies in terms of starting this very program to have a lighthouse on this very journey i now request mr aditya pundir director climate reality india and south asia to please share his views as to how this journey has been what we achieved and what are we looking forward in times to come over to you sir thank you bhavesh i welcome all the participants who have joined today for this program and it's indeed uh, an honor for us that uh, you all have come today and next week we are going to have cop so we are very close to the goal as you everybody is aware out here so i will not talk about climate change uh, though of course uh, everybody knows what happened in spain and what happened in the us elections now so the situations are going to be very very uh, i would say different in coming days so it's very important that the people the young people they understand what is happening and what is being uh, talked about because i think it's the future which we are talking about it is about it is about the policy making for the world it is one of those issues uh, climate change where we are talking about policies where which will impact nearly every country of the world and here we have been feel uh, as a mr bhavesh said that uh, when we started this program last uh, in the beginning of the year so we were feeling this vacuum that unfortunately our young people when we were talking to them they said that when they go there they get confused uh, but what to do whom to talk to what the discussions they should take forward what is the the demand they should put forward so we found that this could be a one genuine need which we could address by better informing and better training so on these principles uh, we started talking to a number of partners and uh, indian youth climate network uh, was one a strong partner which we came across who was also equally aligned with us and then of course cancer came through and then we have a number of partners who joined us and everybody got together and started working on how can we make a program where we can take engage our youth and these people can then further talk about what the global south thinks in coming days so with this basis on uh, bhavesh ji said on 5th of june uh, a beginning was made we started this program and uh, this program uh, we were not expecting initially that it will get even a few hun- a few 100 people pro- probably for the program but uh, we were surprised that over a thousand uh, people showed interest from various universities in the whole south asia and these thousand people started a journey with literally uh, in the last 5 months uh, every program being attended by more than 200 uh, 250 to 300 people who were trying to understand from the experts who were coming to teach how and other various aspects what is mitigation adaptation net zero uh, loss and damage uh, climate finance so these are some of the tough uh, you can say the concepts which need have need to be understood in terms of climate negotiations and these were the uh, topics which were addressed and and the best part in this whole uh, journey was that uh, once you have you have people giving lectures and then of course you understand whatever you want to but but here the people wrote back there were more than 100 plus essays which were submitted by the participants where they talked about what they have understood what they are thinking about those various issues so the assignments were somewhat which really showed that this program has been very impactful uh, the kind of feedback which we were getting from the participants and fortunately now uh, we have uh, of course uh, the journey had to start with it uh, the pyramid kept getting smaller then we had 50 people who were selected and then finally 10 people who are actually going to now participate and uh, take a very active role in the coming negotiations there are couple of them are going uh, to participate in baku while the ones who are not even who are going are also going to be very actively engaged and the best part is that for all the participants i'd like to tell this was the first year which we were trying this was more of a trial year where we were trying to figure out how we should proceed what would be right what would be wrong what would be more impactful how can we make it better so this year has gone up well and i'm quite sure in the coming year 
uh, the next year, which we will be do when we the when the this uh, uh, COP thirty happens in Brazil, we will be even better prepared, and we will have more participants, and we will have more focus about how to take things forward. So I think this looks like this program is here to stay, and we have some very good partners with us. So they will all work together, and we'll all try to build it into a much better program for the coming years. So I would like to congratulate all the my friends who uh, come to this journey and have, are now going to, some of them will be going uh, to represent us. And, and the ones who even participated and who could not make it to the final 10, uh, my message to them is that don't get discouraged. You can again participate next year, that's one. Secondly, it is more about understanding these concepts because these concepts are going to play a very big role in whatever you're going to do tomorrow, whether it's a job, whether it you are going to work for any uh, bank or financial companies, whether it, most of the companies today, which we talk to when they are doing their placements are asking for that they would like the candidates whom they take should be trained in sustainability. At least they should have an understanding of sustainability. So I think this is a very, very important uh, topic of sustainability where, where you know how what is negotiations, what is, what is climate change, you have an inside knowledge. This will be really helpful in coming days. So with that, I have the best wishes and over back to you, Bhavesh. Uh, thank you so very much for these words of uh, motivation, sir. Indeed, uh, a journey in the in the rightful endeavor and there are baby steps to, to reach the higher ladders as, as you have said. For sure, this has been our first year. There were learnings also. And we promise that we'll bring in that momentum in times to come as well. One among the main pillars to have this architecture built in was Kensa, the Climate Action Network, South Asia. And I'm happy to share that we have Mr. Sanjay Vashisht available with us in terms of guiding as to what this journey has been on their part, how they started it off, and more importantly, what they are discussing at the COP. For the last two months, he has been working day in, day out at various forums, at various places in terms of building a momentum for the right foot place for Global South. Sir, our participants are more than willing and happy to learn from you as to what these learnings are and uh, how we should proceed forward further. Over to you, Sanjay, sir. Thank you, Jack. I, you can hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Bhavish, for the opportunity. I think first for CANSA, it has been an excellent partnership with, with the climate reality. Uh, we have, me and Aditya has been talking about, you know, let's do, build some program where we can bring youth um, and we can uh, impart knowledge. We can engage them as active player and we get a lot of support from them. And also uh, we get some ideas on advocacy uh, from, the, from the future leaders. So, uh, so, and that started working and thanks for uh, Aditya to, uh, and uh, that we could have this partnership and thanks Bhavesh for leading it on behalf of both organization. Uh, I think one learning has been um, uh, what we did, um, engaging youth. See, uh, CANSA as a network um, uh, engages with, uh, you know, organizations who has resources, who has paid staff and youth as um, the constituency within cancer, they are there from their own personal will. Um, and that's what we need. We wanted to capitalize on. Um, so what we could do is we have very strong uh, constituency of youth within cancer who is actively following climate negotiations, who is uh, also representing, um, you know, climate actions uh, at various places, uh, with, be with, with governments, be with businesses. Um, so that has been uh, there. Uh, that's one learning that a lot more need to be harnessed. Um, what we could achieve is tip of an iceberg uh, because uh, as Aditya already mentioned that uh, more than 1,000 application came. And in fact, we also received a lot of enthusiasm uh, uh, responses from other countries within South Asia. It's, it was not only India. Um, and we were very happy about this. this, is a, this is a, Pakistan Climate Network, there is a uh, Bangladesh Youth Climate Network, um, there is a Sri Lanka Youth Climate Network. So we certainly have, uh, you know, uh, youth-led organizations which were part of it. Now, coming to the COP, uh, this is the 29th COP. I mean, negotiations has been going on for the last 30 years. And this is the 29th COP. One year we missed because of COVID in 2020. 
Um, and uh, here we are uh, almost on the doorsteps of uh, Baku. Uh, Monday negotiation starts. And this is one COP which is going to, which is basically um, aimed to find solution to one problem that will have a positive impact on all agenda. That is climate finance. So if there is money, uh, ambition can also be there. If there is money, ambition can also be there on mitigation, uh, on adaptation and loss and damage. Every time countries come and talk to each other and then they leave in absence of any money. So they all commit a lot of things in, in the form of action. This is what we can do on adaptation. This is what, what we can do on loss and damage. But when there is no money, um, then the country says, okay, we will see how much we can do on our own. Otherwise, we will not be able to achieve it. Um, pity. Um, and please remember that uh, all climate negotiations are guided by principles of UNFCCC, which basically says that common but dif differentiated responsibility and respected capability need to be the basis, that everybody has a common responsibility to um, uh, find solutions and to work towards addressing climate change, uh, but their responsibility uh, varies because as per their capacity, as per their contribution. Second, historic responsibility. Those who are historically responsible uh, to cause the problem, they should be the, uh, leading it. They should be uh, the one who should lead the um, the action and supported by other countries who, who can, based on their uh, capacities. And third is polluters pay principle. Those who have caused the problem, they should pay. And this is what this COP will be. It, this COP will be all about how we can make polluters pay. For the last many years, COP is also going to look at how we can see polluters within a country also. There are fossil fuel industries within every country, uh, be it developed or developing country. So, um, if I, uh, Bhavesh, is it okay if I can list down four agenda items that we need to focus on the yes, uh, upcoming COP? Please, sir, please. Yeah. Okay. So, first, the foremost is the uh, new climate uh, quantified goal, NCQG. Uh, please remember this term, new climate quantified goal. Um, what we are demanding is at least one trillion per year as a public grant. We don't want investment. We don't want loans to be counted into that. It should be core public grant that should go to the uh, developing countries. The money, the the money should be calculated or identified. A quantum should be identified based on what needs to be carried out to ensure what science says. The action should support it by science. We should be able to do that rather than just giving a political figure um, from the air uh, just to fulfill the political appetite. No. Second um, is that money should be monitorable. Uh, we should be able to monitor it whether money is coming or not. Uh, and that will be, again, a major uh, fight in the upcoming uh, COP. Third ma major point is there is a push by developed countries that, okay, if we are talking about NCQG or climate finance, then those who are going to contribute should not be only developed countries. They should, they should also be developing countries, capable developing countries, emerging economies. Some looks at India also, but certainly many looks at, at China, many looks at Saudi Arabia, many looks at um, uh, UAE, South Korea, uh, and so forth. So basically, there is a, a push by developed countries. We want more people to uh, contribute, and there will be pushback from uh, developing countries. That's not going to happen. Because we have not caused this problem, uh, we certainly do not want to um, uh, contribute to it. If we want to give it, we will give it as per uh, our own will, but we should not be held liable to pay for that. Second major issue is uh, in Glasgow, um, loss and damage financial architecture was agreed. And in last two years of negotiations, fund for responding to loss and damage has been agreed. Secretariat is to be based in Manila. And uh, I think one demand that will come on negotiations will be how to put more money into this fund. Now when this fund has been created, um, how only 700 million has been committed so far. We also want that this, this fund should start dispersing uh, money directly to the communities. Direct access is important. Um, more, normally, many of the developed countries uses argument about uh, transparency, about if the money is going to the right place and then makes complicated institutions. We don't want complicated institutions. We want a very simple process of disbursement and the priority should be the most vulnerable. 
irrespective of whether you are in least developing country or in an emerging economy. Um, so that will be the second agenda item. Third, this is the year uh, just before uh, nationally determined contributions will be submitted next year. We all know that Paris Agreement is anchored or based, has major commitments from all countries, um, basically uh, NDCs, national determined contribution. So global stock take is one which is going on for last two years, and countries has been asked to submit NDC 3.0, NDC 3, basically third version. So that's again uh, what direction parties give. Uh, because by March 2025, all countries are supposed to submit uh, global stock take, and that's one. And global goal on adaptation is being discussed because global goal on adaptation is like giving a global figure uh, how much you want to save, how many people you want to save by 2030. I mean, basically agreeing on a mile on a on an objective, and then you identify a roadmap. It's like that. For example, uh, in carbon emission reductions, we basically says we should stabilize at 1.5 degree. Similarly, for adaptation also, there should be such a global goal. That is global goal. And uh, so far, discussions are about global goal, but I think uh, there is also a demand from developing countries that means of implementation need to be, means of implementation is technology transfer and climate finance. Money and technology need to be linked with global goal adaptation. So these are four agenda items. There are more, but I think these are more relevant and you should keep in watch. Uh, I also want to uh, basically, you know, invite, uh, and this is something, uh, this is a request I want to make to Bhavesh. Bhavesh, uh, we, cancer has around 10 virtual badges. So if people who are not going and they want to attend uh, negotiations, we can accredit them for the virtual participation. Back to you, Bhavesh. Thank you so very much for this, uh, for this offer, sir. For sure, we'll ask uh, among us our network in terms of joining in this uh, online forum. And in fact, uh, thanks for those uh, important pointers. Indeed, climate finance is the most important topic that uh, we feel is being discussed out there and how Global South can play a pivotal role onto that part. Let this friendship grow and we look forward to a more enhanced uh, a version of it in times to come. Thank you so very much, uh, Sanjay sir. Thanks for overall efforts uh, jointly. Uh, Sakshi, can you just uh, put on the presentation? Yeah. So friends, uh, now we move ahead in terms of defining your role during this call. What you can do either being in person out there or being present out there online as well. Yeah, you can just make it full screen. Is this visible now? Yeah, visible, but just make it full screen. Yeah, yeah it's full screen now. Okay. So friends, uh, Dubai Corp was among the most talked about in terms of defining the future course of action and what we are going to do in times to come. There were many discussions going on, which we are seeing in taking shape now. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, wait, Pavish. Uh, okay. So there were models that we were seeing out there in terms of uh, new architectures, in terms of sustainable solutions that are on offer. And one of the important uh, meeting that took place was uh, from the World Government Summit as to what various organizations are doing at the COP and beyond that. Next slide, please. Mr. Vijay Benz represents uh, uh, SNP and he made some very relevant relevations that does COP give us finite benefit numbers also? And I'm happy to share that he shared those insights with, uh, with at some of the platforms of which we were also a part of. And one of the important points that he said was that COP acted as a lightning bolt as far as financial acumen is concerned. Next, please. Next slide, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm trying. Um, there's some glitch. Wait, please. So they were representing some of the organizations that were active in the that are active in the Middle East, namely Dubai International Financial Center, the Abu Dhabi Global Market, and the Gulf Cooperation Council, all making up big uh, financial acumen out there and were leading the green finance portfolio for the attendees, for the 100 plus organizations that we saw made a presence out there. Next slide, please. One among the most important outcome that they were able to show now from leading from COP28 was that in overall terms, there was a biz there has been a business increase of more than 60%. As far as green financing is concerned, within a portfolio of these organizations that made a presence at COP28 in terms of defining and showcasing the solutions. A global average for a multinational bank is in tune of something like 20%. So, where is this incremental effect taking shape and coming into the picture? I'm happy to share that less than 1% of it went to the fossil fuel economy which otherwise this region is known for. What major, what, what, what uh, good point they were speaking out there was that among us, the region, they were having the highest number of lead platinum and gold rated buildings within that region. Blended finance as well as ESG solution showcase was something that clicked for them. Of all the organizations that came there, Almost everyone was speaking of ESG as well as roadmap for sustainable finance and other things that they can take up. Blended finance was one of the things that came up very prudently. So blended finance, I give you an example of say Delhi Metro or Mumbai Metro or Ahmedabad Metro where the whole ecosystem comes into the picture. Finance is there, organizations come and the lender as well as the taker both benefit in overall sphere of things. Next, please. So it was all about presentation as they call it. Next, how you present yourself. Every problem has a creative solution and all the youth to which we have been speaking to, whom we have trained out here, we feel they too have a creative solution as far as COP is concerned. Next, please. Dubai was the platform that gave the rightful lighthouse light to youth, to the forums that made a presence. And I'm happy to share that. Next. There were statement handover also. I'm, I'm again happy to share that uh, Mr. Sanjay Vashisht has been kind enough in terms of adding your words to the statement that would be presented at COP, of which you became a part of. You, you gave notes on to that part. So this statement would be presented to relevant authorities, to relevant stakeholders in times to come. We'll keep you updated on that. Next, please. So it's all about the rightful climate action. And friends, let me tell you, things are not going to stop after November 22nd, that is end of this COP. This is the beginning, I would say. At COP, for sure, we are trying to see the relevant pointers and forums where you and me can talk. But at the same time, action back home is something that matters. So please keep a track of various organizations who have been a part of Youth for COP in terms of understanding what they are trying to do and try to see as a volunteer, as a change maker, how you can work with us. Next, please. Youth for COP made the rightful noises, made the rightful works, so to say. Next, please. And now we wish to support those very youth voices. These fill in the blanks we wish to fill via you, with you, with various partners of cancer, with various partners of climate reality who are doing rightful work at different forums beyond COP also. Now, what's the baby step out there? Onto that part, I have my learned colleague, Soumya, available with us, who will share as to what those first steps, what those initial things that you 
as youth climate change leaders, as media partners, as media representatives can do for us. Thank you so very much. This is Bhavesh signing off. Over to you, Somya, to please take it over. Sakshi, please do the needful. Yeah. Is it visible, Bhavish? Yes, please, yeah. Somya, over to you. Uh, Somya is here. Yeah, one second. So Somya has got some insights for you in terms of making the rightful presentation, making the rightful representation during COP as you are working with us as our media representatives. Hello. Yes, on yes, on okay. Hi, everyone. So here are the guidelines for the media coverage for COP29. Uh, Ma'am, please, next. So these are the general key guidelines that covers consistency in messaging. So you have to focus more on COP29 themes while coverage and use as much as relevant and trending hashtags for your wider reach. For visual appealing, you should use high quality photos and videos that will enhance your engagement. Then be mindful with your tone and use polite words <clears throat> for better reach. Next, ma'am. So here are the do's and don'ts for the media coverage. So in do's, we used to, uh, for your wider reach and better outreach, you should tag more and more official COP accounts engage with more and more influencers and stakeholders to amplify your content and share your live updates during the sessions, keynotes and youth led events. This all will help you to gain more and more, uh, to gain more <clears throat> outreach. So these are the don'ts. While sharing, while uploading your uh, content, make sure that your facts should be cross-checked and your sources, you need to check it once. Uh, don't overshare. So you need to focus more on quantity. <clears throat> Next. So to maximize your impact visibility, the key strategies are first is to collaborate and co-create. You need to collaborate with partners, other youth activities, activists, or influencers so that it has a broader impact. Second is to create call to actions. This will encourage followers to take action, participation in virtual events, uh, or even the, those who are attending the COP sessions. You can use more and more stories and reels for short and impactful updates. This will resonate with the younger audience. Third, uh, next slide. So now it's time to uh, shoot the video. For video shooting, you need to remember a few things for a better outcome. So the most, most important thing is lightning. If you have a, a well-lit area, this will make your image more clear and crisp. Second will be sound. Try to have a, a clear background with low interference, white spot. This will enhance the video and if not possible, try to add it that part. Third, no shaky shots. You can use a tripod, selfie stick, or even uh, uh, if it's not available, you can use your hand to shoot. While shooting, you can use your left hand to control your right hand. This will help you to uh, shoot a more, uh, uh, like uh, the quality of your video will be very good. And this will help you get a more outreach. Then comes timelines. Timeline so you have to be very short and sweet with your, time, uh, with your content. Stick to your time. You can plan your shots. You can rehearse your uh, shots. And you can use stopwatch also for your better results. Then pick the right angle. You can choose a medium shot that is from waist or a full shot from head to toe. And please avoid super close up shots. Uh, try to pan the camera while shooting. Now let's keep it simple. So start with a clear storyline or objective. This will help to save your energy and time both. Then comes 
the back uh, attire wear your school uniform until and unless you have to been told otherwise and for backup backup you can keep some raw footage and edits for future use or references next please so here are the social media post writing guidelines for instagram facebook twitter and linkedin these are different platforms so insta is more fun and frolic so you can use more and uh, like 5 to 15 relevant hashtags this will increase your reach and it's more storytelling you can even ask engaging questions that will help to uh, increase your uh, visibility but you should not use some popular hashtags that are quite irre irrelevant because after some time they will lose your engagement and authenticity for facebook you can uh, share more educational entertaining or inspirational content and try to use more and more images videos or gifs for better engagement but don't limit your text and also try to use more than two hashtags this will help to increase more outreach for twitter because twitter is more uh, like uh, uh, crisp uh, platform so you need to share only the breaking or the momentary things and keep your tweets concise because it has a character limit also so add image give a video and use one to three hashtags for optimal reach try using uh, a limited number of hashtags because this will help you to uh, get more visibility and your better engagement for linkedin you can use two to five professional hashtags so linkedin is basically a platform more professional where you can share most uh, a long story also so for that you need to uh, tag like for uh, five to six hashtags and you you can you write uh, concise insights in a professional tone but don't focus on quality over quantity in your post so this is all about the guidelines wishing you all the very best it's over to you bhavesh sir yeah you may close it uh, bhavesh thank you thank you somya for those insights uh, indeed uh, i would say helpful for for all of uh, people who are attending cop or actively working in the online mode friends this was one of our insights one of our sessions in terms of making your representation better at cop again i repeat these are baby steps we are trying to take because we to uh, because everyone doesn't have a media acumen so to say so how best we can represent ourselves how best we can take those very initiatives those very knowledge insights forward is something that we are trying to build with you rest assured if you are following our social media handles we'll be updating all those things with a renewed focus on youth as do what are the different entities what are the different day to day activities taking place out there for on to which you are relevant on to which your your perspective makes a difference on to which you can be a part of so please try to engage with our social media handles try to tag us out there on any platform we'll try to amplify your voices and there would be a special session for the selected ones in terms of uh, people who are going out there and uh, people who have been selected for online reporting so we'll reach out to you separately very soon with this uh, i thank each and every partner who has made this youth for cop program successful we wish all the very best to to the stakeholders to the participants to the youth who became a part of it and probably shall be joining us shall be amplifying the voice with us together in times to come i see that some of the partners out there in the webinar in case they want to shower their blessings to all our participants will be more than happy uh, in case you want to speak uh, vivek sir or anyone else uh, please just uh, just as a concluding note if you are around
just a moment ah uh, he is is left i think no issues so with this we come to an official close in case there are some questions or you wish to speak we'll be more than happy to take it up yeah lc please Ms. Elsie, again, one of our senior yes. climate reality leaders. Welcome, ma'am, please. Hi, um, everyone. Congratulations to Climate Reality Project India and Asia, Bhavesh, Mr. Aditya Pandir, and everyone of the organization who partnered with them, with us. We are a family, of course. And um, very, very uh, concrete uh, outline I've been following up for the last six months. Very well guided. It's uh, very good. So uh, very quickly, I'd like to tell the youth that um, um, you know your speciality ground. So try and focus on the speciality that you're working on so that you don't have too much on your plate and you do not get distracted because there'll be a lot of subjects being talked about. There'll be overlapping pavilion sessions and overlapping venues. So you just need to stick first to your speciality. If you're in oceans, stick to your ocean speciality. If you're on agriculture or uh, the other topics, you know, if it's if you're fighting for policy and if you're fighting for youth and yungo. So do your homework, keep your sessions ready. And if you can get the speakers also for that session, do the background check of the speakers who are going to be on stage and never feel shy to be the first one to raise your hand, say your full name and proudly say you're from Climate Reality Project India Asia. Proudly talk about youth for a COP and you've been selected, announce that and then say your question wisely to the person that you have spoken, uh, you know, heard on the stage. So don't don't be afraid that, you know, you can go second or third. Sometimes there is no time. So if you can go first and just raise your hand, ask your question very politely, make your mark at that session. So you know what you're preparing for and then you can literally um, say um, your question out loud. That is very, very important. And um, then uh, do not forget that you belong to the youth category, but also try and reach out to bridge the gap between intergenerational, um, um, you know, niche. Sometimes you will get your heroes in seniors and you will find international mentors. So do not forget to bridge that gap. And if you see someone after the session, stay back for question answering and for networking. And when you exchange cards, you can also take their interview and talk and say that I am from India, I am from this, this is my name, and this is my subject, and state your question to him. And you can also record that as an interview to give back to India feedback. So also create mentors and seniors and level with them as well. And these are the two points that I'd like to focus on that was there. And um, of course, keep your team um, very, very closely um, intact. I'm sure they'll create a group for you guys and you'll all be together and um, uh, take part in Yungo. And if there are some field um, sessions, or sometimes they do have field trips, field sessions very close by. And they also have um, evening um, uh, music and climate or they have cultural and climate also stay together and you can attend that as well and take interviews of the heroes of the people you know maybe maybe there may be a president of a country speaking on that so get ready with your questions per day per session create a timetable and be there because there are so many pavilions that you can get lost you can get overwhelmed so uh there's so much more. I will be there. You can always reach out to me. I'm in fact, I'm hosting a session on the 15th of November, 10 o'clock at the Extreme Hangout Pavilion. You can come and join me and it's a round table. So if I see our team members there, I will invite you to the round table. I will make a space for you and offer you chairs there to contribute to that round table. So get in touch with me and be there if you can. 
and I will invite you to the round table for sure. There's so much more, but you can always get in touch with me. All the very best. Very proud of this team that is selected. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, LC, ma'am, for those uh, pearls of wisdom. In fact, quite important for the new ones out there and all those who wish to be a part of a reporting network. Uh, Vivek, sir, uh, very humbly requesting mm -hmm. you that uh, uh, you have been a, a leader par excellence in terms of international cooperation, in terms of building those relationships with people of different faiths, cultures, and identities. Please share your insights with us for the upcoming COP and uh, and words uh, for our for, for our people attending the, the the forum. Thank you very much, Baviji, for inviting me, and uh, I must congratulate everyone, and especially the list you know which is being shared, you know, for getting selected, and for the work they have you know carried out over you know virtual network attending sessions, doing exercises, and. I'm very happy that, you know, like people are selected, 10 people, and many of them are going to COP in person and few are going for virtual. So I must offer one thing, you know, before, you know, sharing something else. Like uh, I have, you know, availability of virtual badges. In case if you do require, then we can definitely, you know, you know grant badges uh, to the young people, those who are interested even beyond the list of 10 also. So second thing, like Elsie has all, already said, you know, many things. Like she has been regular there. And like this is a, you know, very vast event and very high magnitude. Number of people are very high. So sometimes, you know, the new ones may get lost. Even the experience may get lost sometimes. So bet, better is to, you know, frame your, you know, mindset. That what exactly you're looking for. You know, there will be events. There will be some side events. There will be panel discussion, plenaries and heads of the government, you know, meeting, you know, to so think first what you are actually looking for. Hmm? And the best thing, you know, which I have, you know, noticed and I have observed also as an attendee, as a, you know, you know, co-organizer also, like if you are attending any session, then make a choice, set your mind and attend right from the beginning till its conclusion. I have realized many people do go to various sessions, you know, going, sitting there and then leaving the space. It disturbs the tone of the event also. Those who are organizing and the speakers also got distracted. So my suggestion is better choose first, then attend it, and go from the beginning to the conclusion. Ask questions. If you cannot ask, then you know try to establish interaction with the speakers. If they are you know off the dais also, then you know get contact number and share your you know observations right from the talk or your perspective. Then it will settle, you know, yourself in a network where you can find few good mentors as well. You know, even in my, you know, experience in, you know, past few years, I got many, you know, good mentors from such, you know, platforms in UN or, you know, off the UN also. So better to network and uh, certainly, you know, not like, you know, there will be like capacity building hub, innovation hub. And LC has, you know, invited you for, you know, this inspirational space where you can attend this seminar to identify such place. And uh, my experience also says, like, whenever I have attended as a participant, not as a speaker, but simply participant, I have always attended sessions which of my interest and attended in full and then network with those speakers and organizers. And this network actually grows you in, you know, wider knowledge network. So that's my experience and I must say you must follow these, you know, lines from our experiences and other fellow speakers who have shared, like Vasis sir has also shared his views. So follow these instincts. And uh, one more thing which I want to, you know, uh, you can also explore Green Zone also. Hmm? Green Zone has some private players, you know, non-UN affiliates. There also you will find industry partners, young startups, you know. So you can get many ideas. Hmm? So these are the ways, you know, you can think upon. And while on return, think of some, you know, writing some papers or <laughs> having your, you know, observations or experiences and get somewhere published over social media or in some research journals or contribute to some, you know, like, you know, even you can go for some podcast also. Hmm? Since you are young and you are, you know, very much, you know, familiar with the latest, you know, tools which are coming up for, you know, 
people to you know showcase or you know share their views so these are the things and uh, uh like evenings you can sometimes you know people are busy and if you get and i'll also share like collecting visiting card must not be your motto hmm? collecting visiting card or exchanging you if you collect or you know exchange then think of a person and better by the evening you just you know same hello or exchange emails you know sharing some wishes or good wishes otherwise you know you will have pile you know thousands of cards and those networks will not be you know go for long so be peculiar be choosy and, and uh, have some you know kind of rapport building and relationship with you know the eminent people and speakers and experienced people and uh, come back and network with just climate reality be with the network and climate reality has also given us lot of space over the say i must say how many years 18 years possibly and it's yes possibly 18 years yes, yes. so climate reality has given us a space network and uh, you know knowledge network so i must say you are a now part of climate reality you will grow higher in this network in your career in your you know you know personal space also so this is all from my side bhavesh ji in case anything required i will also be there from you know from 10th of onwards till 17th i will be there so in case you you know young people are there you can share my contact number or whatsapp number like we are you know organizing co organizing also and we are going with some other people also so they can be a part of our delegation and in case of any difficulty i will be there with my network they will be support to these young people no worries so thank you very much <laughs> actually i am traveling on the way sometimes you know as always as always uh, diamonds uh, uh, spread out there from your side uh, as far as words are concerned so we'll yes. take a common sense of that sir and for sure try to uh, share it with our wider network also uh, thank you so very much for it and we look forward to a more enhanced partnership in times to come thank you so much sir thank, thank you so thank much. you sure sure malit sir you have raised your hand very quickly in case it's relevant with the cop on the please yeah lalit chudi wala sir yeah 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 hi uh, i am a people researcher and uh, without education uh, degree a new method for producing hydrogen local hydrogen and many byproduct like ethanol ethanol ethylene as the reaction we use for atomic reaction i have a team property but no incubation no anything relevant with cop at this point in time so i understand you have a new technology for all of us we'll for sure share it with our partners out here in case you have something for the cop more than happy and thankful for it sir for um, to reduce this climate uh, emergency i want to uh, i am working for last 14 years without any edu- education and we have a technology uh, we have a uh, method to reduce i uh, we need a uh, of your platform how i will get them fine sir fine we will we have taken a note of it and we'll get back to you on it sir we'll get back to you uh with this i invite ashish ji i'm seeing uh, ashish uh, present out here ashish pawa ji in case uh, you you please uh, can share your insights wisdom for our participants out here you have been one of the most active partners in terms of shaping this youth for cop program ashish ji okay i think uh, ashish is not able to speak uh sakshi we we move on yeah yeah sure bhavish i okay. guess everything has been covered fine and so, i request everyone our each and every participant that do join our social media campaign which we are running for cop 29 and youth for cop and uh, follow us uh, on social media and be a part of this campaign yeah bhavish over to you so friends with this we come to officially close this session and uh, youth for cop for this year 
there are many people working behind the curtains also so sometimes you see us in front of the camera in terms of uh, uh, recognition but there are many people who literally worked out for that and one among the person is uh, dr sakshi grover present out here my colleague so sakshi thank you so very much and all the people in your team also in terms of media flaring in terms of rightful wordings being made somya being a part of it uh, smriti being part of it gitika being a part of it and all rahul and team who have been working out there and in fact a special thanks to the team iycn also who worked behind the curtains in terms of evaluation in terms of uh, guiding us through the thick and thin of it we were working 11:30 12 in the night uh, so a special thanks to all the iycn team members also and at the same time without uh, saying a thank you to all our partners all in our ventures uh, gurujal um, apswdp and uh, uh, mams uh, uh, alka mams initiative the media um, support that she has been running so all of you have been a pillar of strength and most of it the very participants i would say friends we understand many of you are having colleges many of you had exams running in but still you were there through the thick and thin of it you were submitting your assignments you were guiding us in every possible way so all the very best for your future endeavors our engagement does not stop with these efforts it just starts with it so rest assured we'll keep you updated with all what we are trying to do with all the experts like lc vivek sir who are who are always there to guide us and let's see what good we can do beyond cop also so over and out thank you so very much our emails whatsapp chats all the things are open till cop beyond it also so that we can have those meaningful engagements in times to come thank you so very much participants thank you everyone thank you